Wassail cancer, wassail. How you doing everyone? So, I reached 9,000 subscribers today, so thank you all very, very much. It's uh, a nice surprise with my toothache. <laughs> Oh, the dentist can't come quick enough. Uh, and everyone sent lots of amazing remedies, but um, the pain subsided for a couple of days with some ibuprofen, but today it won't go away. Um, but I'm under, you know, the guidance of a great dentist here, and uh, he will let me know when the implants arrive. And... And go and have all that done, which is scaring me slightly. So, cancer. It's the great cosmic reset. What does that mean? Well, oh, hello, wasp. Hello, wasp. I think really, thank you. Um, it's to do with, I set the date arbitrarily almost, uh, on the 29th of January, because that's when Chiron, and it is the healings of Chiron, um, came upon nine degrees and nine minutes of Aries, which is in front of the fixed star Algenib, which is the tip of the wing of Pegasus. And so there's something about the energy immediately of Chiron getting wings, becoming a kind of flying centaur, that seems logical as a healing. And it kind of is an answer to an energy of the wounds of Chiron that we did back in Portugal eight, nine months ago. I'm not sure of the date. Um, they're linked in. So there's a lot of really massive shifting conjunctions, magical applying energies. There's a huge shift going on in the cosmos. The music of the spheres is really ramping up and it's connected very heavily to the solar eclipse and lunar eclipse coming at the end of April, beginning of May. So we're going to ask, what does Chiron want to say to you and what does Pegasus want to say to you about healings taking place in the house of Cancer? Regardless of what you have in Cancer, you might just have Venus, you might just have Mercury, but it's worth digging around and seeing what's the issue you're trying to heal. I'm not trying to make you watch all my videos, but you should. <laughs> because we've all got all the houses, whether they've got something in them or not, they hold keys to our healings. So, Chiron, what would you like to say? To uh, A's, no, not Pisces. Why did I say Pisces? That's interesting. I want to say it's that you need to be more mutable, less cardinal immediately. There's some kind of emotional change that you need to go through. So anyway, Cancer. What does Chiron want to say to Cancer? Um, there's another thing that's going through in my head. I'll have a look at that card in a minute and decide if it was necessary or whether it was a diversion. So, um, Pegasus is in Pisces, except, uh, I don't know, about 700 years ago, the tip of the wing moved into Aries. And it's about removing distortions, living in an energy of truth, actioning things, moving forwards. There's something about that frequency that seems relevant as well to me calling in Pisces. It's like you're outside your true home somehow. It's the hummingbird. It's heart healing. And there is something about, look, the tip of the wing of this hummingbird's reaching outside its home. So it's kind of telling me you're out here and you need to come back into your life force. So what does the tip of the wing of Pegasus want to say then to Cancer? 
What does the tip of the wing of Pegasus want to say to Cancer? What does the tip of the wing of Pegasus want to say to Cancer? Can we please have a message from the tip of the wing of Pegasus to Cancer? It's interesting throughout this series. Um, cards, when they fall, have all been <clears throat> falling face down. Like it's an energy you have to engage with. You can't just glimpse it and go, oh, okay, it's that card. You have to touch it, turn it over. It is your life force. So it's like something is blocking your life force. Something else has moved into your home. That's interesting because actually, cancer is an empty house at the moment. It has nothing in it. So it's something else has moved into your home. And I want to say it's kind of shadowy and wounded. Because um, this does look like a wounded bird. Sorry, I should hold that up for you to see a bit more. Um, I want to say you're on a kind of cosmic pathway because 53 has become a number, a synchronicity number that I'm seeing a lot when I'm out. I see it at roadsides, I see it in shops, on cars, but 53, it might have a relevance, or it could just mean, for you, 5th of March. There's a lot coming, there's a separation coming between Mars and Venus, who are going to do a little bit of a dance on the 14th of February, in conjunction with each other, and they're going to dance together for oh, over a month. We have Aries, which is coming across as, again, action, as I said. Um, right, dehydrated, you're dehydrated. If you're dehydrated, you are lacking moisture. Moisture being water is emotions. You, you're living in the wrong place. Uh, you're in the wrong celestial city or your the seat of your soul isn't connecting to your home so let's have a little bit more on that there's something about a beginning starting something new because it's aries it's first house i mean is it you're waiting until the sun moves into Aries? I don't know. We just need to keep going through. There's a wind of change up here picking up. I can hear the hummingbird. I can't see it, but then all the flowers on that tree are lower down than the space that I can see out from. Um, I am hearing creatures, but not seeing them. That's what they're telling me. Can you hear them? You can't see them. That's you. You're somewhere else. This is that same energy. You're not in your home. You see, this is also interesting um, because it is cardinal modality. Um, it's to renew. It's a new season. It's big ideas. But I think you can't have those until you've been more Pisces, until you've changed, I, um, changed your celestial city you need to clean your celestial city you need to go back to your sacred emotional well 
and you need to find out what's in there. We will ask. We have filter. Filter your dreams. The thing is, um, this is like an unmolded key. Um, there's an energy about it of your dreams are not, your dreams are not benefiting your progress. Your dreams are need filtering need a reality check it's like you have many you have many emotional dreams and yet somehow you can't sort the wheat from the chaff you can't work out i feel like you're possibly having a lot of dreams and you don't know which of your dreams are serving a good purpose for you um I, I'm getting a sense of being in the astral and because you're not in your astral, that's what this is about, I get it now, you're dreaming other people's realities. When you go to the astral, you're accidentally being pulled out of your own dream world into the dreams of others. And then when you're awakening, your cells in your body are connecting. Because this has got Mars energy and the cells, um, molecules within it. It's also about calcination, but it feels like somehow the other people's dreams are activating molecular frequencies in your body. And you're waking, carrying the emotions of someone else the aspirations of someone else and not your own true desires. You're, you've flown your own nest somehow. And I think it's about, I want to say there's something, that there's an energy of needing to banish things. I'm really being drawn to these two frequencies. There's something, it's like you've got hold of the wrong key, the key to someone else's dreams, someone else's big ideas, not your own. You're not connecting to your full truth. I don't usually do this, but there's a little buzz came through. What's that, Reem? <laughs> She's just sending me a sweet message. Uh, <laughs> I just said I was doing the readings. So, um, you're not connecting to your dream. You've got the wrong set of keys. That's what it is. But so, I, what I want to ask is, who's in your home? What's going on in your astral? I am getting a sense of your astral being... Uh, what do I want to say? Squatted? Uh, okay. Who's in Cancer's astral? <laughs> Sounds a bit rude. Um, who's in Cancer's celestial city? Who's in Cancer's celestial city? Who's in Cancer's Celestial City? Uh, uh, it's really interesting. These two cards have come out. They've somehow flipped and they're back to back. The first one I saw was the Rattle. And the back is the Hunter. 
It's like there's no space. It, you're hunting for space in your own celestial city. There's nothing else in that message. It's just you're hunting, you're looking for space. You get more calm. You're ris oh, you see, that's really interesting or intriguing. You get more calm in other people's celestial cities. You're able to find space. Why is your so why is your celestial city, your astral plane, so busy? What's wrong with Cancer's astral plane? Okay. I want to say there's a chill wind of old sorcery blowing into your energy, into your astral world. Um, it's old magic. I feel like because you have a cardinal emotional astral in its roots, in the energy behind the frequency of the space that you should inhabit, your celestial soul seat, it's so desirable in a time when people uh, have had clouded emotions. Because in Earth Epoch, which we've moved from, but so for the last 200 odd years, Earth makes emotions muddied. It silts up the emotions. It blocks. Your astral is so fluid that it's like you've got squatters. You've got other spirits in your astral. And they need clearing out. So we need to understand how you do this. So I'm actually going to go with the runes, apparently. The runes and... Hang on, we're going to go to the Lenormand first. And then the runes. So what does... Uh, what does cancer need to do to clear everyone out? It's it's letter. I feel uh, like there's a sort of sense of espionage. It's like you need to um, you need to plan. Oh, I don't know how to put this. You need to plan you know, like propaganda <laughs> in your own astral of spaces. It's like saying to them, um, it's like going into a dream and saying to your many spirits that are blocking your area, you need to say to them, oh, you never guess. I've been going into some other worlds. I've been dipping in, coming outside of this celestial city. I've been going to these amazing places um, and I've got the keys. I managed to get the keys to them. So look, I'm going to leave this key and you could all go and have a peep. And what I'll do is, is I'll try and get in somewhere else and I'll get us another key because I'm telling you, there's some really fabulous stuff going down in there. It's like a kind of, it's that kind of energy. It's a kind of espionage. It's a kind of trickery that needs to go on. Because you've got to appear like you're on their side. So otherwise they're just going to dig their heels in. You see, look, Idrisil tree. If you think of the Idrisil tree as being your roots and the heaven, your branch, your life, and then up here is the astral plane and all the heavens and all the different dimensions. Look at, look at all that living in your astral. That's not yours. Down there, there's rabbits like, mm, what's going on? They shouldn't all be up there. It's yours. Yeah, we need to get them out. Uh, look, and that's the energy. Look, you bring, you bring yourself to them as a kind of dove of peace. You're offering them, yeah, false hope, but they don't know that. Um, tell me some more about them. Why are they there other than it's got good energy? Why are they there? Okay, so we're they're anchored. They're anchored to the beautiful storylines, the emotional dreams, 
the tales that you can have and they're sort of leeching off your dreams and I think in the astral that's why you've stepped out you're not aware but somehow you needed to just have some dreams that felt solo even though they didn't belong to you they've kind of made you into them in I, uh, I'm not trying to be mean to you and say you're being an astral leech you're doing what you're meant to do because they're blocking your astral um but yeah they're turning you into them you're borrowing dreams from other places and you've got your own but they're stealing your own um there's something about the book there's something about the book a book of dreams do you need to write a book of dreams that are not your dreams to give them like a scrapbook to take with them I, there's something about this letter this book it says some kind of energy about it of it being a kind of propaganda bribe that they need so it's like saying I, i've been in all these other realms and i've collected some amazing stories look i'll give you the book the problem is the book only opens you can only read this book in their world but i'm telling you it's full of so much that's really interesting <laughs> So, let's see what we get with the runes. This book. Because, I mean, you know, it's all very well. You can bribe them out. I get all of that. But even if they've been bribed out, how do you then stop them returning? So, the book. This book. Now, interestingly, I'm pretty sure I just saw a rune hidden in here that's not showing up. Come along now, reveal. There we go. Oh, now that is interesting, intriguing. It's Os. It's Godmouth. The hidden healing. I feel like that's as we say hidden just at the moment it's like it's like you're being starved of the energy of source because they're nicking it all from you we'll come back to that the energy begins with Wirtamir the all rune oh you see now this is becoming interesting right you've got four four zero two four you got 440 or, because that came first, 404. And then you've got 424. There's, it's like, and this, it's like you have to present a mirror. And it's hidden. It's hidden within all the stories. This symbol can be found multiple times hidden within this energy you've got to reconnect with your source how how please how do they reconnect to this source oh watch our animal guide you need to let the dogs out who let the dogs out who you need like a guard dog you need a guide you need a frequency in there i'm going to see if they'll tell me what it is it might be personal to you but it might be that there's a particular i think that once you've got them off you need to leave your spirit guide i feel like your spirit guide's in there but it feels like they don't see it you don't see it it's a monkey It's a monkey with a parrot and a dragon. Take your pick. 
It might be that it needs to be all three of them. Um, I kind of want to say, actually, it's the dragon. You need to use dragon frequency to shore up the walls of your astral. So you are the monkey, um, and you're puzzling out with parrot spirit on your head. The problem is it's a kind of Neptunian fog, and you need to call in the dragon to kind of... I want to say to put up a black fog around your around your celestial city, the seat of your soul, to obscure it from anyone returning. It needs dragon protection. So how are you going to get that? Um, it's interesting that they made me look at that. It's a divine three six. And it's, oh, you see, that's interesting. We're getting anchor again. So the helm, the helm of all, the wheel shield, the Egishelmir, needs to be drawn into the astral mortar. This feels like a process that will go on for a period of time. So to begin with, you've got to create this propaganda book, this promise of trickery. How do you do that? You just have to have a little play. You have to have a little think. You have to talk to your spirit guides. You have to engage by saying, right, tonight I need to go to the astral and this is the plan. We're going to get rid of all the interlopers some of them will be ancestors but you know what they have to move on and you're really trying to send them to astral planes that are kind of like halls of mirror they're kind of like energies of weird to spaces that will hold them in the light so that they can actually dissipate because they're not true souls they're echoes of souls but they are still playing out um, a leeching experience in your world and and they're really heavily deeply anchored and when something's anchored the ship just keeps rotating around they can't get out they they can't get out of your zone they're caught in it you're getting out of it because they're too much and then once they're gone on another night, you'll know because you'll go to a dream and you'll wake up from it and you'll feel beautiful. You'll feel this energy of being purged. Dej, going through. It will all feel and look the same, but you'll know you've been purged and you'll sense the energy of Os. You'll sense a light, a lightness, and then you need to do another dream where you've actually got to say to your dragon, right now, blow your breath. I'm going to sneeze. Oh. <laughs> it won't come out. <coughs> oh, that hurts my tooth. <clears throat> your dragon has to put the helm from its breath somehow in the mortar and then cloud your place for the moment, so that it's only accessible to you. You need a little bit of solo dream time on your own, and that's your healing. It's clearing out your astral and feeling that the space belongs just to you. What do I want to ask now then? I think with Odin and the Nine Realms, what's coming after that? So what's coming then when the space becomes just cancer space again? Their personal portal to the astral. What happens when their astral belongs just to them and it's been hidden in a dark dragon fog so that only the light of their own dreams is within? What's happening? I knew all the way through I was like it's just gonna say love all your emotions will correct 
this is that energy of growth. I want to say a new Idrisil growth because your Idrisil before, the small card with the tree, where is it gone? That was just rammed full of unwelcome visitors pecking and eating all the fruits that were there for your dreams, they're gone. Um, I've been connecting a lot recently with this energy of the tulip tree. Might be worth you looking it up. It might hold some kind of shimmering, glimmering secrets for you. So, what else can we say is coming to cancer today? Well, not quite today, but it rhymed. What can cancer expect? I see that one's, it's come over, but it's not fallen. It's hugging and mugging. It's like the energy of seeing a bigger picture but the weirdest thing is they were upside down and it just doesn't feel like it was part of your energy. I want something to fly, to take flight because there's so much bird energy. You see cards just fell, they didn't take off. It was elks. It is being protected, yes you will be. You are protecting with a dragon. I feel like I'm not getting the answers from those cards. I need the Lenormand again and maybe a last row of the alchemy of astrology. <clears throat> There's some kind of physical regeneration from getting your healing and getting your space back for your dreams, your dreams, not someone else's. What have we got? Oh, I can't pick it up. Right, so this is the first card that's giving us an, a sense of solar eclipse, 30th of April. It's an energetic, I feel like, this, that's interesting. I feel like you're birthing a new earth energy, a new earth snake, serpent, a Yorgren Gandhia, a new destiny by cleaning your astral. So this is your cosmic snake and she needs to come back on. Also at the bottom of the deck, the energy again of Freya, love. You're gonna be, uh, uh, you know, we began with hummingbird. It's all coming back into alignment in your astral, in your real world. But to do that, you've got to clear out the interlopers. What else would you like to say to Cancer about this healing in the astral? Healing in the astral. Right, so. We have two cards face down. One face up. Man. But this is coming across as you and your dragon. It's like, it's not about the size of the dragon. <laughs> it's about the, it's, it's Mars energy. And you began with Mars. It's about the dance, oh, the dance of Mars and Venus. This is about loving the protector that protects your astral your dragon, I know it's a weasel, but it's about you offering to combine an energy of love. And then the two here, it's, it's fascinating because it's got house 11 again, dreams, it's got the mountain, the blockage, the blockage that you have being cleared. It's being turned upside down. There's a wasp on my knee. Go away, please. I'm trying to do something. You're really distracting. Now it's in front of me on the desk. 
Um, no. <laughs> the blockage is upturned. Dog is about the loyalty of your dragon, your energy that's keeping you safe or your astral safe for your own dreams. It's bringing all the energies together and there's a prophetic crystal ball of your dreams totally safe and guarded and it ends with sunshine. It ends with this frequency and there's your hummingbird again doing little kissy kissy noises. Um, the sunshine is being back in to your destiny. Your destiny is created by your um, what do I want to say? Pooling, retrieving your dreams, not the dreams of others. Your destiny lies within yourself, your own astral thoughts, your own astral projections. And at the moment, you haven't been able to slip into that frequency at all. So let's just finish with Alchemy of Astrology. Alchemy of Astrology for Cancer. Yeah, we've got Taurus. You're moving on to the next step. You started with Aries. You're now moving on to Taurus. You're burning out. You're using the Arian... Uh, let me just go back and show you the card because it's the first part of the alchemical process. This is a new journey for you. It's calcination, it's burning, blackening things. The second stage is to thicken and congeal um, and, and make things a kind of crystallized frequency, um, bringing some kind of new energy. It's also, again, just reminding us of the solar eclipse because that's the new moon in Taurus on the 30th of April. And then you've got house six, health. Well, it's not house six, but they're saying it's house six. Virgo is about health. It's about distilling, discerning your true essence. You've lost your essence. I was trying to think whether right at the very beginning there was some kind of reference to scent, but I don't think there was. I think it was just me when I looked out of the mango trees was thinking about it and didn't mention it. So what's the final message, please, to Cancer? It's House 12. It's the final release that empowers all things. You're doing... This period is taking you through House 1, 2, 6, and 12. It's like a jump. It's like a kind of time warp moment it's going to take until the solar eclipse but it really is a change it's the ability to create to command to kind of i want to just say to project yourself into your astral home and your your dreams so you might want to just look at what you've got in house one, house two, house six, and house 12 to see how that might assist you. But also, it's the point that <clears throat> as you go through this process, these are the natural houses that are going to have some kind of progressive transformation of healing take place. And you've got a house of healing, house six. So it's a really important time of year, and if we go back to the beginning, is to, to radiate your sun without everybody else's spiritual shadows in the way. And that's what's coming, to be nourished by your own dreams. So, that's lovely, Cancer. It's very, very nice. 
Um, and I'll see you very shortly. I'll see you.